Uh, well, first, uh, I'd like to bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we have, thank you for this year's Sabbath day that we had today, dear Lord. You gave us such a wonderful day, the day, the best day of the week that we have to spend with you. And we're so thankful for your blessings for this day. We're so thankful for the fellowship that we had this day. We want to give praise to you, and we want to sing joy to you, dear Lord, on this your Sabbath day. We ask this in your precious name, dear Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. Ah, pastor's joined us. All right, guys. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay, tonight I'm going to be reading uh, from the book of Psalms, Psalm 92. Praise to the Lord for his love and faithfulness. And it's a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name on O high, O most high. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. Oh, amen. Wake up thinking of the Lord. And your faithfulness every night. That you brought us through another day, dear Lord. That we have to spend with you. And on an instrument of ten strings. On the lute and on the harp. With harmonious sound. For you, Lord have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of inequity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. So the foolish and the unwise are going to be judged and the faithful will be saved. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold your enemies, O Lord, for behold your enemies shall perish. All the workers of inequity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. For the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Sister White had a, a great quote here about the palm tree in Education 116. God's people like the palm tree. The palm tree, beaten by the scorching sun and the fierce sandstorm, stands green and flourishing and fruitful in the midst of the desert. The tree of the desert is a symbol of what God means the life of his children in this world to be. They are to guide weary souls full of unrest and ready to perish in the desert of sin to the living water. Such beautiful analogy. And here in Florida, we get the sea. And it's how the palm tree is able to survive and, and the conditions that we have and we see them even how they bend and, and survived during the hurricanes. Uh, reading on, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. 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 Anybody have any thoughts in reading this? 
Well, I think I was thinking, um, for some reason today, I was thinking about music mm. as a whole. And I've been thinking of doing a study in the Psalms about the different instruments people would use for music as opposed to the instruments that maybe aren't mentioned and maybe try to get from that, you know, maybe how, what kind of music we should be listening to as opposed to others. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, the, the music of today we know is uh, very sinful. So, uh, the sin, the songs to the Lord are just beautiful. And glory, glorify Him. Amen. Anybody else? Any thoughts? I think it's just beautiful how committed He is to to God. You know, you, you, in the beginning, it's saying that He shows forth His loving kindness in the morning and Thy faithfulness every night. So it means He's continually mm. thinking about God. You know, mm. He's. He's always with him. Yes. Anybody else? I think uh, verse 10 is interesting. It talks about, but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Uh, you know, the scripture talks about how God told the prophet Samuel to take a horn of oil and go anoint David as king. And so uh, when he, he took the horn of oil and when he actually anointed him and poured the horn of oil on him, the horn would be then sticking up in the air and it would almost look like the, the horn was coming out of the head of the king. And the horn is actually a symbol of a king. We know from Daniel chapter seven, uh, when I'm talking about the 10 horns, uh, the little horn, uh, a horn is a symbol of a king or a kingdom. So there's this anointing that uh, happens, and then when the king is anointed, the people are anointed with them. And that's the, the outpouring of the spirit. Amen. Anyone else? Horn of my salvation. I was thinking in Psalm 91, I think there's a verse, well, we're in 92, but it reminded me of a verse in 91. Uh, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust. Maybe it's before that. My shield and buckler. Hmm. Maybe it's in three. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from this. Nope, maybe I'm thinking of another psalm. 18, yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh... Verse yes, two. verse two. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, it's coming up to the close of Sabbath. Uh, how about some praises today? Well, I have a praise. Uh -huh. um, there was a Bible study today. Um, it might have been there when I mentioned it earlier this, this morning, or maybe it was last night. Um, and 
on the chat line. And even though I don't lead out, there's a lot of people there that have a very difficult time reading. So I had a lot of opportunity to, you know, it got a little dicey when we started talking about different cultures and stuff. And we were all trying to grapple with how the Lord allowed those different changes to take place through different cultures after the fall. And I was trying to explain how he allowed different cultures to to um, emerge, you know, different, you know, polygamy and all these different things without actually saying that he condoned any of those things. So basically, I got the thought in my head and um, I said, well, you know, I started, I guess the Holy Spirit was trying to work with me on how to explain how the true kingdom and the counterfeit kingdom both had to have an opportunity to grow so that everybody could see what God's kingdom was like and what Satan's kingdom was like and how that started before the fall. And I started talking about the rebellion and and everything, just these thoughts started coming to my head and the true kingdom and the counterfeit kingdom and the great controversy just it started coming to me in words, not so much in sentences, but then, you know, I started being able to explain things a little bit more and people were just like wowing all these new concepts and and we were reading Genesis and it's just kind of kind of neat how, you know, I used to think that when the Holy Spirit would tell you something that it would be like these really um, glorious sentences and I was expecting these glorious sentences to come out and yet he really just puts a word out there. He just like puts a, puts a word uh, I don't really know even what I'm trying to say I, I guess he kind of like puts a word in your mind like I started seeing these two kingdoms split down the middle and they, I don't know I don't know so Deirdre, I think this is beautiful because the, I, God really provided an experience that you needed because we just recently with you were talking about, you know, the concern of not being able to recall scripture verses and, and, you know, what about in the end times too, like when you need to be defending God's word and stuff and 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 you know he gave you he gave you a personal example of why you're not supposed to worry when it's time to ever you know present God to anyone or 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 higher authorities in this world because um, uh, this is exactly the way God works with us is um, I know what you're trying to say because I've had it happen before too where sometimes it's stuff you didn't even yourself realize but in that moment your mind when you're talking suddenly has clarity. such immense clarity and and everything that you've learned and know is just falling, falling into, into place while the words are coming out of your mouth and it feels like it doesn't necessarily feel like someone's talking through you or anything like that but i've had times where i've stepped away and have told juan what did I even just say? Because I know I was talking, but I just, everything made such sense, but I didn't know that I knew that stuff. <laughs> and, and that's what God does for us. And especially in those times of need, when we're being faced against higher authorities that want to hurt us or put us in jail or something, we are to remain quiet until God gives us the information, the way that he speaks individually to us. And then when we talk, it will be simply the words of God. But like you said, I'm sorry, not her, some, my oh. phone cut out and I'm trying to find it on here. 
uh, uh, but it wouldn't be some, like you said, it's not some big eloquent sentences that you expected. It's just God bringing clarity to your mind. And now you can tell people something that you either knew but didn't fully understand or you knew it but just not in the way to explain it like that. There's so many different ways that he can work, but it's really amazing. And I'm so thankful that you got that experience from him. Yeah, me too. Amen. And I thought, I thought of what Moses was saying this morning, too, about how he didn't really have to overthink after a while, he'd been in the church for a long time wearing jeans and stuff, and he just kind of, after a while, started catching on to the fact that, gee, maybe I should be sprucing it up a little bit, put my dress pants on, and he just started changing, like, bit by bit, little by little, without having to really overthink it too much. That's right. That's how God changes the heart. And that's why in the end we give Jesus the crowns because it was nothing yep. we ever did on our own to make ourselves change. We just need to give our will to God and our mind to God. And then he just makes these changes within us. He changes our desires. Amen. Amen. Yes. Wonderful. You know, uh, and I'm speaking sort of to, to Deidre, but you're all allowed to listen. <laughs> um, sometimes there's something that happens in your life and it will turn you around or you start getting thoughts that you hadn't thought of before. And in one of the incidences in, in my life is when we had the last Hurricane Irma. And it was supposed to be pretty horrific. And we stayed here and I was panicking, ready to take off with the cats. And Michelle said, well, we shouldn't be. Do you think we should be getting ready and doing all this on the Sabbath? And boy, my head snapped back mentally. Mm. And I said, you're right. We shouldn't. And I stopped, the panic stopped, the calmness overcame me. And we sat there in our living room. We put the, uh, the two uh, recliners in the living room. I popped a huge bowl of popcorn before we lost uh, electricity. And we sat there with our tablets, uh, listening to different things and uh, listening to music or listening to whatever. And I know I had tuned in to Pastor Juan house and he was having um uh he had inclination and the children that's when that's when uh the children were much smaller naturally and sare and uh, so we were i you know i didn't understand a word but i could hear the comfort in his voice well when mm -hmm. that thing ended and we looked out the only damage to my property was two trees both of them fell towards the driveway, but they didn't touch the driveway. And I just said, oh, God is so good. None of, none of the trees damaged anybody's house. And, you know, I was praising him for that. And then my neighbors came home and they, and I took water back to them that they gave us. And I said, look, we've got plenty of water. You might need this now that you're back home. And they were talking about, why did God let this happen? I says, well, you came through the storm. Yes. They said, we were in a high, in a high tower type motel or hotel. And it literally was swaying. We were up on the 14th floor. And I said, well, we were sitting here. And after the eye went by, there was a certain amount of calmness. It like it shifted and it slowed down. I said, our God is greater than these storms. And I said, and don't believe for an instant that God makes these storms happen. He allows them to happen. And Satan is the one that does that. So when he does what happened to us here and that storm, we could hear it calming down as it came uh, from the back. It was not nearly like it was when it came from the front. 
And so I had to sing at church the next day. And I had a song all picked out and I was singing it and singing it around the house from that the night, the, for the, the time, the, the hurricane until it was time to go to church. And as I was getting my hair combed and everything, I all at once, I was impressed with the song, How Great Thou Art. Most of us know it and love it very much. But I want to tell you, Deidre, I came to church. And I'm going to cry now. I came okay. to church. And when the pastor announced that I was going to sing, I got up, started to walk towards the piano. Now, I don't play the piano, but I was going to just hit some notes to help me get through the song. And when I got over, I started to cry. I said, I can't sing. So I sat down at that piano and I played the song. And I don't play. Mm -hmm. I do not play. Uh, people don't believe it, but I really do not know how to play the piano. I can hit a few notes here and there. Plink, as I call it, plinking. And I was crying through this. And, but I got through that song and someone came up to me and said, I've never heard the song played like that. It was inspiring. And I said, it wasn't me. Yeah, I was not playing. That had to be the Holy Spirit because why was my mind changed? And to use that song, and I don't know if it's because I was telling the neighbor how great God was. Mm. Us here in this neighborhood. Yes, there's some people that sustained damage. But there was no lives lost in our little side of the world right here. But, and I find that there's many times I'll have something on my mind. And another thought comes in and I change my mind of what I'm going to sing. And there had to be a reason. Someone needed to hear that song. And I guess with the uh, hurricane, God wanted everybody to hear it in our church. Amen. But I couldn't sing the words. I could not get up and sing. So because I, wanted, I came home and I sat down at the piano and tried to play it again and I couldn't. So the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways. Amen. 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 Well, I think we should sing it on that note. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Any other praises? Prayer requests? I just praise God for the fellowship we had today. Amen. And, um, you know, God, God blesses the church when, um, when we become more united and, and know each other so well, like, like, like brothers and sisters, like true family. And, um, and I just, I love that fellowship because I love getting to know everyone more. And, um, and I know we're doing blessings for today, but I want to do a shout out for Thursday as well, because uh, Juan and I got to spend some real great quality time with John and Marilyn, and it was such a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And let us pray for the lady that fell today there at the church. Lavinia. 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 Yes. Thank you. Okay, now I know who that is. Yes. Because <laughs> I couldn't get turned around to see without literally getting up from my seat. And I said, what happened? Did someone fall? Did someone hit the door real hard, you know, by accident, trying to go out? And, of course, then later I learned, yes, someone fell. Yes, she was, she's been a member here. And then she went back to, to, she went, I think, to one of the other churches. And now she's back and she has a son. Yeah. Yes, she she had moved to Lehigh, and now yes. uh, now she's moved down to Naples, so she's come back to our church. Well, that's a good thing. I have a prayer and a praise. <laughs> I want to praise God for the way He's bringing the church together. It is so wonderful. These opportunities to have 
a fellowship lunch together. They're so nice. And sometimes I think we should just go home, but then when we're there, it's a very nice time. And I thank God for that. Yeah. But I also, I also want to pray for Craig because his, his sermon was so good. John and I shared it with the uh, Ludington Church today, and, and they'll probably be checking him out on, on, um, on YouTube. But he, he did such an amazing work with um, documenting it all the way through and how important it is for us to be watchful. And he said to be watchful of what's happening in the world as well as um, uh, with prophecy. And I thought that was interesting because usually people say, don't look at the world. But if we don't look at the world, how are we gonna know where we're at? And I just, I just appreciated what he was saying. And then I appreciated what, what we were learning this afternoon from um, Phil also. John and I were just shocked. And uh, so we went on the internet and looked and found out some things. And um, it was very enlightening. And maybe we can share that with, with you folks another time. But I just praise God for all that he does with um, the learning and the growing that we do and, and the love that we share with each other. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And remember Ezekiel. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Of course, Kevin. Amen. And and let's um thank God that He's been healing Pastor, and let's ask for, a, I don't know how Pastor's feeling, but let's ask for continued full recovery for him. Amen. Amen. I think he's doing like better. He wanted it. to race um, Oscar today. Really? So. <laughs> 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 oh, I gotta what, put that what, down in my notebook for the praise because I've I've been putting them down as answers come up. We want to pray for our children and grandchildren, and uh, we want them to be in heaven with us. Everybody's family. All their families. Amen. It's so nice to meet Natalia and see Jill, too. That was lovely. Can you pray for my Aunt Vi? It's B as in Victor, V-I, Vi. Can you pray for her? She's, um, uh, just pray for, like, her safety and, um, her, just her overall <laughs> well-being. Yes. Thank you. Okay, got it. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, oh. just the um, that gentleman uh, that has COVID that's in severe condition, and we don't know his name, but it's um, the boss. It's a, it just someone that a Angelo was asked to pray for. So I don't know the guy's name though. Yeah, the COVID and the cancer. Yes, yeah. yes. Have him here. Okay. Oh, boy. Sorry, I know he's here, but I can't. Oh, okay. Is that it? Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, if that's it, let's bow our heads. And then could we have somebody welcome in the new week after? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything that you do for us, dear Lord. We especially thank you for the wonderful fellowship that we had at our church today. We are so blessed to have wonderful parishioners and guests. And there was a, just a, a lovely feeling in the church all day. And thank you too for the wonderful sermon that we enjoyed. And you certainly have blessed our church today, dear Lord, and we thank you so much for that. 
please bless Lavinia and um, help her to heal completely from her fall. If she had any scrapes or muscle pulls. And um, please pray, especially hear our prayer, especially for Ezekiel. Uh, he's um, lost his uh, foot, and uh, we're so worried about him having a recovery from that. It must be uh, not only physically difficult, but just terribly painful in, um, in his heart. So please help him and please help brother Kevin as well. He's having trouble with his foot and he's uh, hoping he'll be able to heal the foot and keep it. And uh, we ask you please to have mercy on him. Uh, please keep healing pastor that he will not have any pains or aches. He, he works so hard and, and he does so much for us all. And we do appreciate his, his every, everything he does for us, dear Lord. And please bless all of our children and our grandchildren. They need you um, and they need to know uh, more about you. And it's very important to us that they be able to join us in heaven, dear Lord. And we know Amen. there's much work to do there. And please uh, bless Kelly's Aunt Vi and heal her and help her to uh, recover her health completely. And... Um, Please bless Angelo's friend with the COVID and the cancer. Although we can't remember his name, we are remembering him in prayer to you, dear Lord. And we know that you know his name very well. And these are our special prayers and petitions for today, dear Lord. Thank you again for the wonderful church service and fellowship that we had. And please bless us all. We pray this, dear Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, kind Heavenly Father. Thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for bringing us all together and enjoying the day with you. Thank you as it closes. We start a new week and we ask for your blessings to guide us and protect us throughout the week. Help us to help anyone that comes our way with your will and your way. And Lord, we are so grateful and thankful that you're with us because you are the blessing that we yearn for. A father that looks over us all the time, guides us and helps us and teaches us. There's so much we don't know. We have so much weakness, but you make us strong. And this, we are grateful that you are our father and you help us. Because without you, we would be much worse than we are. So thank you and bless you. And thank you for helping us through another week. In Jesus' holy name, amen.